Welcome back to Who's to Know, and tonight for dinner, we are gonna be making dirty rice. Now, we are gonna be using this box mix. Later time, we will do a video about making dirty rice from scratch, but for tonight, we're gonna to be making this from a mix, so let's go ahead and get started. Said you, you can choose your own one pound of whatever meat you would like, ground beef, ground sausage, ground pork, ground turkey. Or I also suppose you could probably get ground chicken if you wanted to do that. I prefer to use ground beef with this, and so it says you need one pound of ground beef. That's what we've got right here. So we're gonna get started. We're gonna put this on about medium high heat. One thing about the oil when I left it out the first time was it was fine in eating it. I froze the dirty rice mix and it didn't thaw well. It was very dry. So even though it says optional, I'm gonna add just that one tablespoon of oil. It doesn't say what type of oil. I usually use vegetable oil unless it specifically calls for canola oil and I'm not going to measure this I'm just going to put a a healthy pour in there Good friends of mine, one of their standards on their meal menu is dirty rice. And this is the way they eat it. The exact same mix that we've got here in beef. Sometimes we they use turkey. Put it in tortillas with a little bit of just your standard quesadilla cheese. Also what I like to do and the way we used to eat it with that, with that particular family was we used to put hot sauce in there to give it a little kick. So we're just going to start breaking it up. You know how this goes. We'll add a little bit of flavor to that beef instead of just what the dirty rice um, spice mix will add. We're getting close to all of the meat is almost brown. Is I keep a glass jar in the freezer of oil as it builds up, and so I'm just going to pour that the excess oil from this straight into that. And I like to keep it frozen. Here I've got my jar of frozen grease. Everybody's got a different method for this. I'm right hand dominant, so I hold the pan with my right hand and then I just kind of set it on the edge just like this and just pour ever so slowly. I have a spoon right here that I'm holding and just keeping any little bits of beef from getting in there. Because we do want a little bit of oil, like I mentioned, to stay in there, to, I'm not gonna completely drain it off. One trick I have learned is before I put this back on the burner, what I'm gonna do is just wipe the side, wipe the bottom to make sure there's no grease on there so that it doesn't get on here. Having a glass top is really nice, but if you were to have a traditional burner with an eye on it, that wouldn't go very well. So we, we wanna make sure we get that grease back off there. Mix up two and a half cups of water. Because I drink bottled water, in things like this, I actually use bottled water. You don't have to do that. I'm just showing you the way that I do it. So we got our water in there, and then the rice, and any of the spices. And you can see uh, the spices do come out in kind of a lump, so what I'm gonna do is break that up with my spoon. Then I'll go back and deal with and figure out how much time we've got to do this for. I'm gonna well blend it and then bring it to a boil. I'm just gonna continue to break up any clumps of uh, beef that maybe still are together and make sure that those spices are also broken up. So this says, bring to boil, then reduce heat to low, cover, simmer 25 minutes while I'm waiting for this to boil and go ahead and set my timer. I got this Sunbeam timer from uh, Walmart and I'm just gonna go ahead and set that time, set it back up here. I like to put it on my vent hood. Then you can throw the box away because you know how much time you've got left. So we've brought it up to a nice boil, reduce the heat to low, cover, and simmer. Now this is one of those recipes that it does require you to have a tight fitting lid. This is this lid for this pan. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that on there. I'm gonna set my timer and then we're ready to go. For simmer, 25 minutes or until the rice is tender. When we get down to about 24 or 25 minutes, we can check the rice and see if it's tender, if we think it might be ready. A 
Another thing I love about this Sunbeam timer is that it will actually give you an alert at 10 minutes and at five minutes. Check on it to make sure. This is where if I added not enough water, it would be maybe dried out already. Or if I added too much water, we would still see a whole lot of water in here. It looks like that it's gonna turn out just right. I think I'm just gonna leave the lid on and come back to that. Now the question is always, what do I serve with just something like this? My go-to side is always gonna be frozen peas. I like a nice balance out of something that is lighter and fresher. And what I actually use is I have one of these Pampered Chef um, little quart things that goes in the microwave and just pour in some peas. The design isn't like this in, anymore, but you can still find this on eBay. Now what I'm going to do is just, uh, when I fill this up with water, I'm going to cover it, put enough water that covers the peas. So like you can see, I've covered it. Now we're going to put the lid on. I'm going to put it in the microwave for about four minutes. So some of the rice is, is starting to stick at the bottom. So what I'm gonna do, I've actually got, the timer says I have two minutes left, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off right now. And go ahead and pull it off the heat because we don't want the, the rice to start getting burned down there and, and stuck on there. And it will do that. I, I've got my burrito, my flour burrito here. And again, I've got my quesadilla um, or sometimes called nacho cheese. Just gonna put a little bit right here, just like this. And again, you can put anything else on here that you want to. This is just the way we would always eat it. I'm gonna go ahead and spoon some of my dirty rice mix just straight onto here. And that's gonna melt the cheese that's on there. And then like I said, we always, um, we always put hot sauce on it. So it gives it a little kick. If you don't like hot sauce, you don't gotta put it on there. Now getting, getting it to to kind of fold up the right way and, and stay in there and not kind of fall out the bottom is a little bit of a skill to learn. Usually what I try to do is fold it in at the sides like this, fold it in at the sides like this, fold this part, fold it under, kind of tuck it and just roll it and try to keep those sides in just like that. If I was going to take this in for lunch, what I would probably do is probably wrap this in some parchment paper or some plastic wrap just like this to actually keep it and that would make it help it hold its uh, its form a little bit a bit more. These are out of the microwave and now what we're gonna do is we're going to drain out the water. Again I really like this Pampered Chef and I'm sure you can find it on eBay because all you have to do is just drain it out just like that. The lid and the handle lock together so that it does it easy every time. Now that I've got my peas, what I like to do is I just take the lid off and I just add a little bit of salt. I don't really add anything else. You can add butter if you want. That's up to you. Zhuzh it around just a little bit and I just pour it straight onto my plate. Some people would say these two things don't go together and that may be true, but this is how I eat it. So I usually eat these two things together, like I said, to balance out the meatiness and the very heavy carbohydrates that are in the dirty rice. Uh, with some peas. So that is dirty rice. Thanks for watching.